War Machine uses area of effect attacks to represent large spells or explosive blasts that can potentially affect multiple models. These attacks can affect a 3, 4, or 5 inch diameter circle on the playing board. An area of effect attack can be a ranged attack, a magical attack, or even a melee attack. When a model makes an AoE attack, all the normal targeting rules apply. The attacker still requires line of sight to his target. He still suffers the firing into melee penalty when firing at a target in melee. And his target may benefit from cover, concealment, elevation, stealth, and other defensive bonuses like that as normal. If the attacker's target is in range and the attacker's attack roll succeeds, then his target is directly hit by the AoE attack. Then we take an appropriately sized AoE template and we center it over the model directly hit. If any part of the template touches any part of the base of another model, then that other model is considered hit by the AoE attack. Note that there is a distinction between being directly hit and hit. So the model targeted was considered directly hit on a successful attack roll, and all the other models that are clipped by the AoE are merely hit. Our Ironback Spitter Turtle here has a Spit Blast AoE 3 ranged attack. If he targeted this Stormblade leader with his attack and the attack roll succeeded, that Stormblade would be directly hit, and then we would place the AoE centered on him. Once the AoE is correctly placed centered on the model directly hit, we see that it clips the Stormclad and this Grunt in the Stormblade unit. Those two models are hit by the ranged attack. Models directly hit by an AoE attack suffer a damage roll with a POW equal to the POW of the weapon. Our Spit Blast attack here is POW 14, so our Stormblade leader will suffer a POW 14 damage roll. Other models that are hit by the AoE attack suffer blast damage. These models suffer a damage roll equal to half the power of the weapon, rounded up. In this case, where our Stormclad and our other Stormblade Grunt were hit by the AoE but not directly hit, they would suffer blast damage, which with a POW 14 ranged attack would only be a POW 7 damage roll because it is half of the damage rounded up. All of these damage rolls are simultaneous. Blast damage is often referred to in special rules. For instance, many models are immune to blast damage and wouldn't suffer a damage roll at all. When a rule references blast damage, it applies to any model hit by the AoE, but not the model directly hit. Blast damage from a ranged attack still counts as a ranged attack damage roll, and blast damage from a magical attack still counts as a magical attack damage roll. So when a special rule, say, gives you plus two to all your ranged attack damage rolls, you still get that plus two to your blast damage rolls. You would take the POW of the weapon, divide it by two to come up with the blast damage POW, and then after that add the, say, plus two from that special rule. Blast damage rolls can also be boosted like normal, at the cost of a focus or being forced. Many AoE attacks have special rules attached to them that refer to models that are hit and or directly hit. When a special rule affects all models hit by an AoE attack, it includes both the model directly hit and all the other models in the AoE that are just hit. Our Turtle Spit Blast, for instance, has the Continuous Effect Corrosion special rule. This special rule says all models hit by the attack suffer corrosion. So in our previous example, both the Stormblade Leader who was directly hit, the Stormclad, and the Stormblade Grunt would all get the Corrosion Continuous Effect place on them because all three models were hit by that AoE. Our Warlock, Caliban, has a spell called Hex Blast that fires off a magical attack with a 3 inch AoE. This attack has a special rule that affects models directly hit by it. Models directly hit lose any upkeeps and animi that are currently on them. If he had fired this Hex Blast at the Stormblade leader just like the turtle did and his Hex Blast had hit, the Stormblade leader would be directly hit and the Stormclad and Grunt would merely be hit. The Stormclad's Arcane Shield would not be removed by the Hex Blast because he was only hit by the Hex Blast. And the Hex Blast specifically says 
that it only removes upkeeps from models that are directly hit by the AoE. So if he wanted to cast that spell to remove the arcane shield, he would be forced to target the Stormclad. He could not just clip it with the AoE to remove that upkeep spell. When an AoE attack misses, it still has a chance to splash some blast damage on some nearby models. A missed AoE attack is no longer centered on its target. It is centered on a randomly determined spot on the game board called a point of impact. To determine the point of impact, first we check the maximum distance it could possibly deviate from the target. If the target was in range of the attack when the attack missed, the maximum deviation is half the distance between the attacker and the target. If Caliban here fired off a hex blast at Gorman DeWolf, that attack would automatically miss because Gorman has stealth. We would then check the distance between these two models to see how far it could possibly deviate. Gorman appears to be 8 inches away, so the attack can deviate half this distance, up to 4 inches maximum. We then center the AoE deviation template over the target model with the one direction pointed directly away from the attacker. We roll a d6 to determine the direction of deviation. We then roll a second d6 to determine how many inches it deviates along that direction, up to its maximum. If we roll higher than our maximum on the second d6, we reduce it down to the maximum. In this case, with Caliban, it could only deviate at max 4 inches, so if we rolled a 5 or a 6, we would just reduce it to 4. If we rolled a deviation such that the AoE would be centered off the table, we reduce the deviation distance so that the AoE would be centered on the edge of the table. If our hex blast here deviated in the direction of the 6 and moved 2 inches, then the point of impact would be right about here, as marked by this bead. Once we've marked the point of impact, we center the appropriate AoE over that point. Every model under this AoE is considered to be hit and suffers blast damage. No model under the AoE, even if they are directly under the center, are considered to be directly hit. In this example, when the AoE is placed, only Watts is clipped by it. He would suffer blast damage as a result. He would not be affected by the Hex Blast's special rule that removes upkeep spells, because he was not directly hit in this case. Merely hit. When an AoE attack misses because its target was out of range, we don't put the deviation template over the target to determine point of impact. We mark a spot along a line toward the target at maximum range, and then deviate from that spot. If, for instance, Caliban fired a Hex Blast at Ryan, way in the back. We would note that she is beyond the 10 inch range of the hex blast, causing the hex blast to automatically miss. We would then need to mark a spot 10 inches out from Caliban directly on the line toward Ryan to deviate from. The range of this hex blast spell is 10 inches, so we mark a spot 10 inches directly toward Ryan with this bead. The maximum distance it can now deviate is half the distance between the attacker and this bead, so 5 inches. We'll then use the AoE deviation template on this bead to determine the point of impact. If we then say rolled a 4 for direction and 4 inches for distance, the bead would deviate to about here. This is where the AoE attack would be centered now, and we see it hits no one, so no model would be hit by it. If it instead deviated in the one direction, a few inches like this, we would center the AoE there, and it would clip Ryan now, doing blast damage. Note that in this instance, the spell deviates beyond its normal maximum range. That's okay. When an AoE misses and lands on a model, and that model takes blast damage, these blast damage rolls are resolved just like when an AoE hits. They follow all the rules for blast damage, they gain any bonuses or penalties as normal, and can be boosted like normal. Some AoE attacks have special rules that tweak the normal rules. Ryan here has a special AoE 4 ranged attack that says, Models hit suffer a POW 12 damage roll. 
This is a fairly common special rule we'll see with some AoE attacks, and it'll always be written as Models Hit Suffer. This causes every model hit by the AoE to suffer a damage roll. This applies to models directly hit, and those just hit by blast damage. The damage roll referred to in the special rule replaces the normal AoE damage rule. Ryan's special attack, for instance, says models hit suffer a POW 12 damage roll. So the model directly hit would suffer a POW 12, and then every other model in the AoE would also suffer a POW 12. None of the models would suffer blast damage. These special damage rolls replace all the blast damage rolls. If she used this attack to hit our turtle friend here, we'd see that it would directly hit the turtle, and then also hit both zombie fish hanging out nearby. As a result, all three models would suffer a POW 12 damage roll. The turtle has a special rule called Girded. It makes him, and any friendly models base to base with him, immune to blast damage. Normally, that would mean the zombie fish that are hiding under his shell would never suffer blast damage. Unfortunately for them, this special attack by Ryan does not do blast damage. It just causes all models hit to suffer a damage roll. So Girded doesn't apply, and it would kill both fish. Another special rule commonly attached to AoE attacks is a rule that causes the AoE to remain in play for a round. In cases like this, you must mark the spot on the ground where the AoE hit with a ring or a circle to determine where it is staying in play. The rule will always go on to say that something will happen to models that enter or end their activation in this AoE. As it happens, Ryan's special attack also has this special rule. After she hit our turtle friend here, we'd set a 4 inch AoE ring down centered on him to mark the area that it remains in play. Her special rule goes on to say that this area is now a cloud effect. It also says that models entering or ending their activations in this area suffer a POW 12 damage roll. A model is considered to have entered an area when some effect causes its base to go from outside of the area to anywhere within it. Any effect can cause it to enter an area. It can advance into an area, it can be pushed, it can be placed. Anything that causes a model to be outside of an area and then inside it is considered entering an area. A model that is already inside of an area cannot then enter that area. So if our turtle here shuffled a couple inches, it wouldn't enter the area. It's already inside it. A model with any part of its base touching the AoE ring is considered to be inside the area. Remember her special rule said models entering or ending their activations in this area suffer damage. That part is easy enough. If our turtle activated here, stood still, and then ended his activation, once his activation was over, he would suffer damage from the ring. If he just walked out of it, though, he would not suffer damage because he wouldn't be entering it. He would just be leaving it. So, when a model starts his activation inside a dangerous area like this, He's always given a chance to get out of it. Our Bokor here and his couple zombie friends would not be able to walk through it, though, without suffering damage. Since they are clearly out of it, if they walked into it at all, they would immediately suffer a POW 12 damage roll. So they'd want to go around it. Note that the OR in Entering OR Ending Activation is an exclusive OR, meaning if somehow you manage to enter the ring and then also end your activation in the ring, you wouldn't suffer the POW 12 damage twice. You would suffer it immediately upon entering it, and that would be it. Some special rules will refer to an attack's point of origin. Usually, the point of origin for an attack will just be the attacking model. If he's channeling a spell, it'll be the model he's channeling through. But AoE attacks have some extra rules for points of origin. When a model is directly hit by an AoE, then they consider the point of origin to be the attacking model. When a model is merely hit by an AoE and not directly hit, it instead considers the model that was directly hit as the point of origin. If a model is hit by an AoE attack that deviated, that has no model that was directly hit, then it regards the new point of impact 
the center of the circle as the point of origin. In this example, our turtle spitter here fires and hits our journeyman warcaster with this AoE attack. In this case, our journeyman is directly hit, and the two warjacks nearby are merely hit. The journeyman was directly hit, so she considers the turtle as the point of origin of the attack. She doesn't have any special rules that refer to points of origin, so she doesn't really care about that. Our two jacks here, though, our lancer and our stormclad, are carrying a shield and a buckler, respectively. These weapons have a special rule that gives them an armor bonus unless the point of origin of the attack is coming from their back arc. So in this case, they were both hit by an AoE attack that directly hit the journeyman warcaster. So they will treat the journeyman warcaster as the point of impact of the attack. This point of impact is not in the back arc of our lancer, so he can still raise his shield up and get his armor bonus against this blast damage. For the Stormclad, though, the point of impact is in his back arc, so he is not able to use the armor bonus from his buckler against the blast damage that he'll suffer from this attack. If the AoE attack had missed and deviated, and say landed up here, it would hit both the Journeyman Warcaster and the Stormclad. Since the attack missed, neither model would be considered to be directly hit neither model would consider the turtle the point of origin of the attack. Both models hit would consider the point of impact, that spot on the ground where we centered the AoE, as the point of origin from the attack. Once again, the journeyman warcaster doesn't care about points of origin, but the stormclad does. Since this point of origin is also in his back arc, he would not get to use his buckler bonus against this blast damage roll either. Remember that all AoE damage rolls both those that damage models directly hit and the blast damage that damage the models that are merely hit are all simultaneous. This can affect some special rules. If our Ironback Spitter here fired an AoE attack at the Stormblade Standard Bearer, it would directly hit him and hit the Grunt below him. If he rolled high enough on both damage rolls to kill both models, the two models would die at the same time. This can be important against Standard Bearers. Standard bearers have a special rule that goes off when they are destroyed. When they are destroyed, you can replace a grunt within one inch of the destroyed model with the standard bearer. It's as though that grunt picked up the standard to carry it on. What our Signar player here would like to do, once these two models were determined to be destroyed, is take the standard and swap it to the nearby grunt who's an inch away, and then once he dies from that same AoE attack, swap it down here leaving us with a standard. But this ends up being illegal. As we place them both back on the table, when our first standard at the top died, he died at the same time as the one right below him. So the special rule goes off right now as they're both dying, and the standard must pick another Stormblade within an inch to pass the standard to, but there isn't one because the one who was there originally died at the same time as he does. We see this come into play a lot with the self-sacrifice special rule that Exemplar Errants and Creelstone Bearers have. This rule goes off when a model is disabled. It allows the player to instead destroy another nearby model to keep the disabled model back up on the table. But the rule strictly forbids you from picking another disabled model to sacrifice for the original. So when an AoE attack splatters a bunch of Exemplar Errants all at once, they all get disabled at once. If you want to pick a nearby model to sacrifice as per the special rule, it can't be one of the models that was splattered by the AoE. The rule strictly forbids that. They all got disabled at once. Like so many War Machine rules, the rules for AoE attacks are simple on paper, but start to get complicated when you stack a bunch of special rules on top of them. The rules are always very well written, however. They'll always very specifically reference whether they affect a model directly hit or hit, so be sure to know the difference. They'll specifically refer to points of origin or points of impact. They'll specifically note that they affect blast damage or just regular damage, which is any damage roll from an AoE. As long as you can remember and keep these keywords straight, it's very simple to apply any special rule to the AoE rules. 
Thank you for watching. For more guides, battle reports, and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site, tell a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.